I've definitely made mistakes. I think all photographers have all those experiences from when everything's blurry and you can't figure out why, or when everything goes black and you're concerned that your camera is broken, forgetting to charge your battery. I've made a bunch and hopefully I can share them with you and spare you the pain of making them yourself. Or maybe you've already made them and you just wanna feel less, less alone and figure out how to fix it. So I'll be going through some of the more common ones and sharing my quick fixes with you. But first I wanna talk about Squarespace because they're sponsoring this video. If you want your own portfolio or website, you can go to Squarespace and make one in like 10 minutes. It's very, very easy. And for 14 days, you can get a free trial. Go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea and use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. That's C-H-E-L-S-E-A. Thank you, Squarespace. All right, the first one. Have you ever looked through your camera and everything's blurry? You're looking through, you're mashing the autofocus button, you're putting it in manual focus to see if that's it and nothing is working. Well, you definitely want to check your diopter. And that's the little dial next to your viewfinder. And it has a plus and a minus, And it helps you see. It's actually for people with glasses so that you don't have to wear your glasses while you're looking through the viewfinder. Um, but it's very easy to hit it and then end up thinking that your eyes are broken or you're broken or your camera's broken. It can be very confusing if you've never done it before. So if you run into that situation, check your diopter first because it's the quickest, easiest thing. And then from there, the troubleshooting gets a little more complicated. So you may as well just check that first. The second mistake that I continue to make actually is incompatible settings. There's so many different settings and features on cameras now that it's easy to turn one on and forget about it and then realize another one's not working because of it. Here's an example. I like my electronic shutter on my mirrorless camera, but when it's on, I can't use a strobe. It will not fire. And a few times I've stood there like, what the heck is going on? Why can't I use the strobe? Is it the strobe? I'm checking everything. And then I realized I just forgot to put it into a mechanical shutter again. So my tip is to go into your phone, go into your notes app, and then put your most common mistakes in there just to remind yourself. So if you're having a problem, you can open it up and say, oh yeah, when I'm doing this, I have to change the setting. Um, that's just one example, but there are many other examples where if you have one setting or feature on, another one might not work. So if you discover that, put it in your notes app right away, because if it's not something that you're changing all the time, it's easy to forget and it can be frustrating and you could break out in a cold sweat during a page shoot where you're like, oh my gosh, I really don't want to be going through my camera. You gotta like pretend you're like, just checking things. Just, this is highly technical. I'm having messed up at all. I'm a professional. You don't want to be in that situation. Number three, similar to that, is forgetting your settings. And I still do this one too, because I use my exposure compensation dial a lot, especially when I'm taking wildlife photos. Because if I'm taking a photo of a white bird, it's very easy to overexpose those bright feathers. And so I'll turn exposure compensation down a couple stops, a stop, and then I forget about it. And I'm wondering why all of my photos are underexposed. And it's because I forgot to put it back. This one is a little bit more difficult to correct if you're not a person with good habits. Sometimes I just say it out loud to myself. I know that sounds silly, but it helps me remember. And I'll be like, you gotta put your exposure compensation back. So now I'm in the habit where when I go to take certain pictures, I just check all of my settings. Before I even go out into the field when I'm taking wildlife, I make sure that I'm in shutter priority. My shutter speed is set for a fast animal. My exposure compensation is at zero and just kind of like reset everything to make sure I'm not forgetting something. But you can also personalize the settings and have your own menus in your camera, depending on your camera. I won't get into the details because it's gonna vary and then just put your most common settings there. That's gonna help you streamline and be more efficient and make you less likely to forget. There's a mistake I think that we have all made. You're taking photos. You're getting the best shots of your life. Like you're looking through the viewfinder, you know that feeling where you're like, oh, this just looks good. These are gonna be amazing. Like you rush home, you load all of your photos on the computer and, and you're calling them and you're editing them and you're just so excited you post right away. And then the comments come in and some trolls gotta tell you that you forgot to level the horizon and you forgot to remove some sensor dust, and maybe things are a little bit oversaturated or overprocessed because it's so easy when you're excited to rush to posting your photos. 
And I've done this before. I'm just really excited. I'm sure that I nailed it with my edit and I've made this mistake enough times where now it's just a policy for me. I sit on my photos, go do something else for a little while, come back to my photo and then look at it with fresh eyes because it's very, very easy to gradually edit and overdo things because you acclimate to your edits. You can overlook huge mistakes because you're so focused on doing another thing right, but you're so excited. Anyway, take a break, come back the next day, look at it with fresh eyes, re-edit, and then walk away again. This time it can be shorter, maybe just for like a few minutes, and then check it again. I'm lucky enough where I'll have Tony look at it and be like, did I, is this edit obvious or did I mess this up? It never hurts to get a second opinion, but I've definitely learned that. Something happens when you're excited where you, you can't quite see clearly. Speaking of mistakes, what is the point of taking a bunch of gorgeous pictures and working hard on them and figuring out all of these nuanced, difficult things if you're just going to post them on social media where they fade away forever? What you really need to do is to compile them in one place where you control how people see them. And you can do that by getting your own Squarespace website. That's where I put all my favorite photos. And it's not just that I make it so that other people can see it. I like to see my favorite photos and I like to see them turn into my not favorite photos because learning is about making mistakes, fixing them and improving. And often I go to my portfolio and I think I could do that better now. It's been a few years since I put that shot up. I have a better shot. I need to refresh or I need to go out and try to get a different shot that's better. It's a good way to push yourself to improve, to measure your progress, to show off your best photos. And they even have things like a place where you can sell your prints or places where you can put your client galleries so that you don't have to worry about sending them or emailing them photos. They can just log in and get them. It's comprehensive. It's easy. It only takes a few minutes to set up. And it's a mistake to not try it because they have a 14 day free trial. No credit card. You don't have to remember to cancel and then they lock you in. It's not like that. It's easy. Try it out. Go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. And if you decide you like it after the free trial, I know you are. Use the coupon code CHELSEA to get 10% off. That's C-H-E-L-S-E-A. Thank you Squarespace for saving my website because it was ugly before you. Not gonna lie, that was a mistake too. And I add that to my list, bad website. Made me look like a bad photographer. Okay, the next one. All right, I actually continue to make this mistake too, to be honest. Um, just tripods in general. I'm not even going to get specific with it because when it comes to tripods, I don't know what's wrong with me. First of all, I always tell myself I won't need it. That's a lie. It's like dealing with morning Chelsea where I'm like, you don't want to wake up for that shot. Yes, you do. You got to override the lizard brain. I don't want to carry the tripod, but I do want the tripod. So now I know I just bring it. It's got to be big enough. I've tried to get away. I've tried to strike a happy medium. I'll just bring a light tripod. Nope. Nope. You need a good substantial tripod if you're going to be doing things like astro or travel photography, long exposures, all the greatest photos that I want to get. I need to bring the correct gear. And then the other thing I'll do is I'll actually lug out a big tripod and then just like strap that up the legs, like put one on a rock, not like tighten it, do like a terrible job. Why? I made it all the way there. Why am I doing it? I know the correct way to set up a tripod. Why am I doing it terribly? Like my strap is flapping in the wind, making it less stable. Why? Why do I continue to do this? Knowing the correct way to use a tripod, knowing how to level it, knowing how to weight it, knowing how to make sure that it's not going to be impacted by the substrate that it's on or the wind is very important. I actually have an entire video about that. So if you're not sure, you should watch that. And also, if you're like me, you should know you need the tripod. Don't try to get out of it. Don't leave it in the trunk. Don't leave it in the hotel. Bring the tripod. You gotta bring it. Here, here's my um, dumbest mistake. Sometimes I look through the viewfinder and everything's black. And I think my camera broke and my lens broke and the world broke and the sun broke. But I just left the cap on. I know what happens to you, don't lie. The last mistake I'm going to talk about today is dead batteries, because I know you all have grabbed your camera at a crucial moment to discover you're at 10% or 5% or 0% and it's heartbreaking. And this one I've almost completely remedied and I have 
like a two part thing that I do. First of all, I have two batteries. And so there's always one on the charger and always one in my camera. And before I go anywhere, I sweat, I switch it out with a fresh one and I put the old one on the charger. So I will always have a fresh one. Um, I can't manage one battery. I learned you heard my tripod story. I, I need redundancy. I need help. I know that about myself. So I have two batteries and there's always one charged. And then the backup that I have in case I do make mistakes, which we've learned I'm prone to, I have a USB-C charger. If your camera and your car are compatible with USB-C charging, it's good to have a cable in your car. So there have been times um, where I have like a point and shoot. It's for more casual stuff. It's not that serious. I'm not as diligent and I just plug it in in the car on our way to where we're going. And that usually just tops it off or gives me enough juice to take the pictures that I need. So I've got like multiple redundancies here there's no reason to have a dead battery just get two or three if you're even shooting a lot and uh always keep one on a charger and that should do it you're good to go now if you have any other mistakes you'd like to share i'd like to hear funny ones i always think it's really charming when someone's been doing this for a long time and they they still make a really silly mistake it happens so if you're a beginner don't feel bad don't feel like you're not a pro or you're not good because you make mistakes. It just happens. It's a part of it. You just learn from it. Some of the things I said, keeping notes on your common mistakes, setting up redundancies for yourself, making sure you just learn from them and then move on. And of course, you don't want to make the mistake of not having a Squarespace website. So again, go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea, set it up and see if you like it. It's free for 14 days. If you don't believe me, try it. Try me. And you'll get 10% off. And then Squarespace will see that you use my coupon code and they'll be like, she's good. And then you'll get more podcasts. So that's how that works. Thanks so much. Leave those comments down there and I'll see you next time.